So in the earlier series, Gustav taught us the things that inspire him, how to start building reports. And the second, he's been teaching us two of his reports. That's the call analysis report, um, the emergency services report, and the Formula One report. I'm going to wrap up today with some other reports he's built. And then we would ask for his final thoughts on the BI space. Hi, my name is Ebenezer Safwa Du of Eureka Business Intelligence. Um, welcome to our YouTube channel. And this is the Power BI Guru series. This is the third for Gustav Dudek. He's so good that we couldn't have just one or two times of him, but a third. This is probably my longest interview ever. It's been so amazing and I've been learning so much that I can't stop learning. Gustav, welcome once again. Hello, Benazo. Thank you for the invitations. Right. So, what do you have for us today? Which dashboards are you going to take us through? As I first to. So, we've already showcased the emergency analysis from VNA Enterprise 14th installment, and we already discussed also the Formula One analysis, the 15th installment of DNA Enterprise Challenges. All right, so what's the next? Onyx e commerce. We got a couple of options actually, Ebenezer. We have an Onyx challenge on e commerce analysis. And I have a couple of other options like the demos that you can see also on, a, on a LinkedIn or a completely different topic about the, the reports, which is the training dashboard, so called uh, the fitness dashboard, which I made for my fiance as she. Uh, has been training uh, powerlifting, so it's based on the All right. fitness resume. I see. So Let's can... start with Onyx. Go to demo. If there's time, we just hover around the training dashboard. Sure. So I will try to focus on uh, some things that not necessarily be applied in a different um, reports that we are discussed. So one thing that's, that's pretty much cool here is the possibility to select different metrics on this heat map. And by the way, I strictly recommend heat maps as general as a, some method of visualization of the data because it's highly effective in many cases. It gives you an information about some highlights, trends in some specific data categories. So I think heatmaps are generally cool. And here you can just see which metrics you can analyze on your heatmaps. It's basically um, the type of the day as the columns and the specific hour as the records. And you can also choose either you just want to show the values as an absolute value or the relative which means the percentage. Or you can also select the hidden values, which means that you can see only the colors. And I think it's pretty much useful because as an analyst, many times you can wondering and thinking about what would you like to showcase on your heat map. There will be the values or the percentages of the total or even the color itself. Here's the possibility to solve this particular problem by generating the select, select pane, which gives you the possibility to choose either it's absolute, relative, or hidden. So you can decide on your own what you'd like to. This is very useful. And you can select whether domestic or foreign. Yeah, it's actually um, related with the localizations of the specific clients, uh, their purchases, revenues, generation localizations, etc. But 
it's nothing fancy. Anything you'd want to share with us on the um, cluster chat? I see a drop down. We have the similar possibilities like showing the data monthly or total year to date, which, I'll, which we already discussed. We have the additional um, slider, which can be used to just expose and highlight different period on the chart. So it's a, in some scenarios, it would be effective to use it. And I believe if you can select different metrics, you can also see the update. So the entire dashboard slice or the entire report slice on these metrics for sales, everything here. Yes, wow. Ex except this summary visualizations on the left, on the left section of this report, which it speaks on revenues, units sold, and number of purchases. All right. Here is the highlighted section, which is constructed to give you possibility to analyze your data as you wanted to see. So you will just you just can select the metric, and all these visualizations is uh, interactively and dynamically changed based on your choice. All right. And to be honest, I think that's all for that particular report because other functionalities are very similar to other reports. Okay. So we can just go to the, another one. So please, have another pick. If we go to the training dashboard or to the demo B2B contractors, which was the, which um, the demo B2B would be nice. Yeah. So here we have some pretty interesting functionalities which are not presented in previous reports. And something I would like to highlight when we are talking about this particular report is the um, having similar colors for the same categories of data or the metrics. So, for example, in that particular scenario, here are the contractors for the um, precisely the service one, so called service one, and here are contractors within the service two. And if you have the bubble charts, which basically shows the very similar metrics. It's the same color as um, revenues and profits on these charts to make that distinguish between the service one and service two. So here comes about uh, the color pattern and color choice. And it's quite significant because it makes the general user experience much better. Because yeah. they, they can get insights much more quickly and to correlate some, day, some data. Well, you have on top the first step, which look at top best. Total 55. Yeah. And actually, actually, with this particular slicers, you just start your analysis in this report because you can dynamically choose Either you just want to filter all the data down to the top or the worst contractors, taking into consideration the specific number of these contractors. So, for example, if you choose, for example, 10 to make some distinguish, you can just filter only the 10 contractors, the clients, which are the best for the specific categories, for the specific metrics. We just have chosen the profit, but you can also choose the revenue, for example. So we can see the top 10 contractors by the revenue they generate. And you can also just pick the year, but it's a different story. And all the data for this page is dynamically changed to the criteria you just you just carried out. Okay. So look at, you said the default analysis, the tabular and the forecasting tool. Can you take us through that? And why you did that? Could you say that again, Abanazar, please? 
You have default analysis, a tabular view, and a forecasting view. Yeah. That's so, uh, mm -hmm. let us understand why you did that. Default analysis is basically uh, related with the actuals, with the realization in specific data period. The tabular, the tabular view gives you the same information, but more in the tabular view way. So, can you click on that and let's see? Sure. So here we have the top 10 contractors because that's what we chose before. And you can analyze this particular contractor by the revenues they generate, unit sold, unit income, expenses, margin, margin, percentage. So you have the same information as on the previous page, but in more um, tabular view. However, you just can use another button, which is here. And to give you a, it gives you a uh, possibility to just have the tabular view, but on a, a little bit more, a, a little less space. And uh, in addition to that, you gain the possibility to show the trends for specific contractors, because that, that are something like the two worlds. You just might wondering, would you like to present some data on a tabular view or as a line charts and for trends, etc. And you have just both worlds in one view because you just have an access to the table, but you can dynamically change the trends for specific contractors. So you can see the two things on one view. Wow. Another cool and the forecasting tool. And the forecasting tool. I'm just guessing so what if? Yeah. <laughs> yes, forecast analysis basing on the parameters in Power BI, so-called what if param parameters. And it's very simplistic approach to the some kind of predictions. So let's use it with uh, conscious. However, it basically relates related with the situation when you have some realizations in specific year and you assume that you will have similar dynamic changes in the future period. So for example, in the 2020, so basic on some evaluations for specific metrics, like the changing in unit price or percentage of allocations of costs related to some specific contractors is the simplistic approach to forecast how the margins, revenues, costs, etc. Et um, will be expressing in the future Periods. So, for example, if you assume that the service price will go up by 20, 25%, you can see the final results, for example, for the December next year. Some highlighting the, the forecasting actuals with color patterning, but the ability to make the bubble charts even bigger to see the contractors. It's always the dilemma. If you would like to show the names of contractors or uh, show only bubbles. If you have many bubbles, you just can have the mess. How are you able to think about all this in your report? Could wow. And you have, a, you have also the tabular view for the forecast, which gives you something like this, but it's more like visually appealing table that the most effective table as it could be. Because here is the, here is the one thing that expenses and revenues should have the same scale to be somehow effective and well designed. And as we unfortunately didn't have the possibility to dynamically change the scale in the tables for formatting bars, it's fixed. So it, it's looking good, but in the real life scenario, such table not necessarily would be used. Wow, this is great. There's a lot of work, I can just imagine. So how long, then probably just touch on your fiancé's dashboard for some few seconds. 
Is she the one training on the background? Yeah. That's wow. It. So here's another element of the designs and layout. You can customize and personalize your reports to the end user. As fiance is the end user of this particular report, he's, he, she has his own image in the background. <laughs> wow. So it's actually the one pager at this moment because I have a ton of ideas how it can be improved in the future, but it the destination, the the goal of this particular report was to monitoring week by week results of Marta. So here you have similar information about weight training, but in a different categories by type of exercise, by priority, by the exercise itself, by all categories. So it's a good example how you can use Power BI, not necessarily in the in the work, in a business field, you can also use it for your own use. Wow. Personal. I mean, this is practical ways that probably I can very useful for a particular scenario that you've chosen, which is a real life scenario that people would normally not think of. This is fantastic. I mean, this could I mean, this could be used so many ways. I mean, that's one good thing about Power BI. You could easily use it for different types of industries. Well, I've done some dashboard just for public discussions. It, during our elections, I did one just to help the discussions where there was a link to the final results and the tabulation was quite interesting. I mean, there are various scenarios you can use it. I did one for the African Cup of Nations. It's it's just amazing what you can use Power BI for. Thank you so much, Gustav, for the time. Um, I would definitely have to ask some few questions before we go. Um, so in all of this, what motivates you to do that? Because it takes a lot of time. Shortly speaking, I have the benefit that uh, my personal passion is the same as my job, as my work. So I actually did. I, I actually do the same in work as in a, my personal life, of course, when I have the spare time. So it's it's the constant upgrade and being better and better every day in your own passion. And as I want to be. Uh, Better every time I've made I made a new report, so I put a ton of work actually and hours to to be constantly updating and and checking all the in, new informations, actualizations, up to date trends in the field, etc. Wow, this is so. Do you also do such reports in your normal day to day, or this is just for the challenges? Do you do your actual reports this um, so much design for the clients that you work with at Ethereum? Could you say that again? Could you? I mean, do you do such... Um, I think I understand. <laughs> if, if I do on a regular basis for clients, similar reports as, as you can see here, and I would say generally yes, because I have the personal requirement that more or less every every consecutive report should be better than previous. So even if it's for the client purposes, I've made all, I've made all the best to make it as possibly effective as it could be. Well, wow. so, speaking for clients, I will try to make very similar reports in terms of quality because, of course, it, those reports have, has completely different categories and specifications requirements. So they look different in terms of data presentation, but but the quality is actually the same. Okay. All right. So 
I mean, what is your advice for new entrants in the BI space? What should they do? So if we are talking about Power BI specifically, I would say that having the dummy database that they can work with would be the very good first step just to learning the Power BI. Because watching all these inspirations and people and content in the internet is the one thing, but if you have the possibility to just transform and to work on a real or dummy basis, it's a tremendous value. When you can just go step by step and all and do all these steps on your own. All right. So they should start from where? Where do they, where, where does one start in all of this? When? Meaning? Yeah. From where? where? It means what source they... Yes, how, do, how does one start gaining such experience with what you just shown us? So I would say it depends if the particular person works daily as an analyst or in some similar um, industries or fields, or he just uh, want to make usage of the Power BI for their personal requirements and needs. All right. So for example, if you just want to be better at Power BI, I would say that you should start with um, monitoring all those people we are talking about and to be honest, DNA Enterprise Platform is also a good way to start because they, awesome. have, they have all this, those challenges and it's a perfect place just to start practicing using Power BI. Wow. What do you think the future of BI is? I think it has a tremendous potential and I think that it will be uh, it. I think many industries will be using Power BI and general BI solutions and tools more often because we are in the moment that people are, are getting familiar with those tools but I think it will be improving even more in the nearest future and maybe in the decades. Interesting. All right. Thank you very much for the time spent. I've really learned so much and hopefully we'll catch you another time. Maybe we'll do a live session demo where you go from end to end and we follow. Thank you very much. I'm very much grateful for down. I'm sure the audience and viewers, you've learned so much. I'll give you a link to his bio on LinkedIn. And um, he's also hosted on Novi Pro and Enterprise DNA. I'll get you some links and some of the things he said so that you can actually watch out for them and learn on your own. Right. Cool. Thank you very much. Thank you very for much. This invitation. Also, thanks for your time, for your patience because the start of this interview was a little bit tough <laughs> but I believe it's getting better. Wow. All right. Thank you very much, Gustav, and catch you later. Thank you, Bernadette.